Bradley International Airport IATA, BDL, ICAO, KBDL, FAA LID, BDL is a civil, military airport in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Owned and operated by the Connecticut Airport Authority, it is the second largest airport in New England. The airport is about halfway between Hartford and Springfield. It is Connecticut's busiest commercial airport and the second busiest airport in New England after Boston's Logan International Airport, with approximately 6.4 million total passengers in 2017. The four largest carriers at Bradley International Airport are Southwest, Delta, JetBlue, and American with market shares of 29%, 19%, 15%, and 14%, respectively. As a dual-use military facility with the U.S. Air Force, the airport is also home to the 103D Airlift Wing of the Connecticut Air National Guard. In 2015, Bradley was the 54th busiest airport in the United States by number of passengers in plane. Bradley was originally branded as the Gateway to New England and is home to the New England Air Museum. In 2016, Bradley International launched its new brand, Love the Journey. It is included in the Federal Aviation Administration FAA National Plan of Integrated Airport Systems for 2017-2021, in which it is categorized as a medium hub primary commercial service facility. The former discount department store chain Bradley's was named after the airport as many of the early planning meetings were held here. History World War II Bradley has its origins in the 1940 acquisition of 1,700 acres 690 hectares of land in Windsor Locks by the state of Connecticut. In 1941, this land was turned over to the U.S. Army. As the country began its preparations for the impending war, the airfield was named after 24-year-old Lt. Eugene M. Bradley of Antlers, Oklahoma, assigned to the 64th Pursuit Squadron, who died when his P-40 crashed during a dogfight training drill on August 21, 1941. Topic: <laughs> Post-war to present. The airfield began civil use in 1947 as Bradley International Airport. Its first commercial flight was Eastern Airlines Flight 624. International cargo operations at the airport also began that year. Bradley eventually replaced the older, smaller Hartford Brainerd Airport as Hartford's primary airport. In 1948, the federal government deeded the airport to the state of Connecticut for public and commercial use. In 1950, Bradley International Airport exceeded the 100,000 passenger mark, handling 108,348 passengers. In 1952, the Murphy Terminal opened. Later dubbed Terminal B, the terminal was the oldest passenger terminal in the U.S. when it closed in 2010. The April 1957 OAG shows 39 weekday departures, 14 American, 14 Eastern, 9 United, and 2 Northeast. Nonstops never reached west of Chicago or south of Washington until Eastern and Northeast began service to Miami in 1967. Nonstops to Los Angeles and Atlanta started in 1968. In 1960, Bradley handled 500,238 passengers. In 1971, the Murphy Terminal was expanded with an international arrivals wing. This was followed by the installation of instrument landing systems on two runways in 1977. In 1976, an experimental monorail was completed to link the terminal to a parking lot seven tenths of a mile away. The People Mover cost $4 million and was anticipated to cost $250,000 annually to operate. Due to the high anticipated operating cost, the monorail was never put in service and was dismantled in 1984 to make room for a new terminal building. The retired vehicles from the system are now on display at the Connecticut Trolley Museum in East Windsor, Court in 1979. The Windsor Locks tornado ripped through the eastern portions of the airport. The New England Air Museum sustained some of the worst damage. It reopened in 1981. In 1986, new Terminal A and Bradley Sheraton Hotel were completed. The Ronkery Cargo Terminal was also constructed. In 2001, construction began on a new parking garage. When completed, the garage could not immediately be used. 
The September 11, 2001 attacks led to regulations requiring parking structures to be set back farther from the tarmac. For several weeks after opening, every vehicle had to be individually inspected, severely reducing its value. Bradley eventually received a waiver for normal operation of the garage from the Department of Homeland Security. 2001 also saw the commencement of the Terminal Improvement Project to expand Terminal A with a new concourse, construct a new international arrivals building and centralize passenger screening. The airport expansion was part of a larger project to enhance the reputation of the Hartford metropolitan area as a destination for business and vacation travel. The new East Concourse, designed by HNTB, opened in September 2002. In December 2002, a new International Arrivals Building opened west of Terminal B. This structure houses the Federal Inspection Station and has one jetway for deboarding aircraft. Two government agencies support the facility U.S. Customs and Border Protection and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The FIS terminal can process more than 300 passengers per hour from aircraft as large as a Boeing 747. This facility cost approximately $7.7 .7 million, which included the building and site work, funded through the Bradley Improvement Fund. Currently the International Arrivals Building is utilized by Delta Airlines and Frontier Airlines Apple Vacations for their seasonal service to Cancun, Mexico and Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. All international arrivals except for those from airports with customs preclearance are processed through the IAB. International departures will be handled from the existing terminal complex. In July 2007, Northwest Airlines began non stop service from Bradley to Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport. The airline normally flew a Boeing 757 200 but more than once substituted for a slightly larger 757 300. It was Bradley's only overseas flight until September 2016 when Aer Lingus started new service from Bradley International to Dublin. On October 2–3, 2007, the Airbus A380 visited Bradley on its world tour, stopping in Hartford to showcase the aircraft to Connecticut workers for Pratt & Whitney and Hamilton Sunstrand, both divisions of United Technologies, which helped build the GP7000 turbofan engines, which is an option to power the aircraft. Bradley Airport is one of only 68 airports worldwide large enough to accommodate the A380. No carriers provide regular A380 service to Bradley, but the airport occasionally is a diversion airfield for JFK bound A380s. On October 18, 2007, Bradley International Airport was named one of the top five small airports in the North American Airport Satisfaction Study by J.D. Power and Associates. On October 7, 2008, Embraer, an aerospace company based in Brazil, selected Bradley as its service center for the northeastern United States. An $11 million project was begun with support from teams of the Connecticut Department of Transportation and Connecticut's Economic and Community Development. The center is intended to be a full maintenance and repair facility for its line of business jets and is expected to employ up to 60 aircraft technicians. The facility was temporarily closed 10 months after opening due to economic conditions, reopening on February 28, 2011. On June 21, 2011, the cargo variant of the new Boeing 747 8 stopped at Bradley on its introductory world tour. On June 22, 2012, the Connecticut Airport Authority Board approved the hiring of Kevin A. Dillon as the executive director for the Connecticut Airport Authority, including Bradley International Airport. Executive Director Dillon plans to continue the development of airport facilities, as well as the establishment of new routes. On October 21, 2015, Bradley announced renewed transatlantic service, partnering with Aer Lingus to bring daily flights between Bradley and Dublin. Service to Dublin began on September 28, 2016. On September 13, 2018 Governor Daniel P. Malloy announced that Aer Lingus service at Bradley International Airport will continue for at least four more years under a new agreement made with the state, committing the airline to continue its transatlantic service at the airport through September 2022. Additionally, Aer Lingus committed to placing one of its first four A321 NEOLR aircraft on the Bradley to Dublin route. Norwegian Air Shuttle flew the airport's second transatlantic European flight. The first flight was on June 17, 2017 to Edinburgh in the UK. 
On January 15, 2018 the airline announced it would end service from Bradley to Scotland, with the last flight leaving March 25, 2018. The owners of TAP Portugal, a consortium headed by Mr David Nealman, have expressed interest in starting a direct route between Lisbon and Bradley International. On January 25, 2017, Spirit Airlines announced new daily non-stop service to Orlando and Fort Lauderdale along with four times weekly seasonal service to Myrtle Beach. The first flight to Orlando was on April 27, and service to Fort Lauderdale started on June 16. The same day, the company also announced seasonal non-stop service to Fort Myers and Tampa, which began on November 9, 2017. Topic: <laughs> Facilities. Bradley International Airport covers 2,432 acres (984 hectares) at an elevation of 173 feet (53 meters). It has three asphalt runways, 6 24 is 9,510 by 200 feet 2,899 by 61 meters, 15 33 is 6,847 by 150 feet 2,087 by 46 meters, 1 19 is 4,269 by 100 feet 1,301 by 30 meters. In the year ending March 31, 2016 the airport had 93,678 air aircraft operations, averaging 257 per days, 61% airline, 21% air taxi, 16% general aviation and 3% military. 64 aircraft were then based at this airport, 48% jet, 31% military, 3% multi-engine, 11% helicopter and 6% single engine. Terminals. Terminal B, the 1952 Murphy Terminal, was closed to passenger use on April 15, 2010 and had two concourses. The old terminal continued to host the Bradley offices of the Connecticut State Police and was used for storage until its demolition in late 2015 and into early 2016. It will be replaced with a new 19-gate terminal, see below. Terminal A has two concourses. The East Concourse gates 1 to 12 hosts Air Lingus, Air Canada, Delta, JetBlue and Southwest, while the West Concourse gates 20 to 30 hosts American, OneJet, Spirit and United. All international arrivals except flights with customs preclearance are handled at the International Arrivals Building, located to the west of Terminal A. This building was formerly used by Northwest Airlines between 2007 and 2009 when they offered non-stop flights from Bradley to Amsterdam. Today Delta is the sole operator using the IAB. In 2017, the IAB was renamed to Terminal B until the brand new 19-gate Terminal B is built, because Aer Lingus flights from Dublin have U.S. preclearance. The third floor of Terminal A has the administrative offices of the Connecticut Airport Authority. <laughs> Airlines and destinations Topic. Passenger Bulleted list item Topic Cargo In addition to the regular cargo services described above, Bradley is occasionally visited by Antonov and 124 aircraft operated by Volga DNEPR Airlines, and Antonov Airlines, transporting heavy cargo, such as Sikorsky helicopters or Pratt & Whitney engines internationally. Topic. Military operations Connecticut Air National Guard 103D Airlift Wing 103A. Flying Yankees 118th Airlift Squadron 118As, operates the C-130 Hercules. The squadron was previously designated as the 118th Fighter Squadron and operated the Fairchild A-10 Thunderbolt II close air support aircraft from the mid-1970s to 2007. Between 2007 and 2013, the squadron operated the C-21. Military air transports that are commonly seen include aircraft such as the KC-135R Stratotanker from bases such as Pease Air Force Base in Portsmouth, New Hampshire and Bangor Air National Guard Base in Bangor, Maine. 
C-17 Globemaster III aircraft from McGuire Air Force Base and Charleston Air Force Base are a less common but occasional sight. Connecticut Army National Guard 169th Aviation Regiment, 104th Aviation Regiment, 142nd Aviation Regiment Army Aviation Support Facility and the Army Aviation Readiness Center provides aviation support to Army operations, medevac and air assault missions throughout the world. Flying UH-60 Blackhawks, CH-47 Chinooks, C-12 Fixed Wing. The Connecticut Wing Civil Air Patrol 103rd Composite Squadron operates out of the airport. Topic Statistics Topic In plane passenger statistics Topic Top destinations Topic Airline market share Topic Future Topic Airport Construction On July 3, 2012 the Connecticut Department of Transportation released an environmental assessment and environmental impact evaluation, detailing a proposal to replace the now vacant Terminal B with updates and facilities intended to improve access and ease of use for Bradley travelers. The replacement proposal calls for Demolition of the Murphy Terminal and existing International Arrivals Building Construction of a new Terminal B, with two concourses containing a total of 19 gates, two of which could accommodate international widebody aircraft. Inclusion of a new Federal Inspection Services facility within the new terminal. Construction of a new central utility plant. Relocation of the Terminal B arrival roadway and departure viaduct. Realignment of Showposter Road, and Construction of a new seven-level parking garage and consolidated car rental facility, adding 2,600 public parking spaces and 2,250 rental car spaces. The proposal calls for a three-phase construction program. Demolition of the existing Terminal B, realignment of surface roads and construction of the new garage, rental car facility would occur during the initial phase. The initial phase is estimated to cost between $630 and $650 million. Construction of part of Terminal B and its upper roadway would occur in a second phase, with an estimated completion date of 2018. Construction of the final segment of Terminal B and its upper roadway would occur in a third phase, with an estimated completion date of 2028. Actual completion dates could vary due to funding and demand. Ground transportation Rail Amtrak and Hartford Line trains serve both the nearby Windsor Locks and Windsor stations. As of 2018, weekday service includes 11 southbound trains and 12 northbound trains at Windsor Locks. Plans call for every train at Windsor Locks to be met by a shuttle bus connection directly to and from the terminal. Officials have discussed plans to construct a fixed rail link to the airport. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Bus Connecticut Transit Route 34 provides local service connecting Bradley with Windsor and Hartford. Route 30, the Bradley Flyer, provides express service to downtown Hartford. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Environment. The Connecticut Air National Guard 103D Airlift Wing leases 144 acres square kilometers in the southwest corner of the airport for their Bradley Ang base. 
The base is a designated Superfund site. Bradley has also been identified as one of the last remaining tracts of grassland in Connecticut suitable for a few endangered species of birds, including the upland sandpiper, the horned lark, and the grasshopper sparrow. Topic: <laughs> Awards. In 2017, Bradley Airport was named fifth best airport in the United States by Condé Nast Traveler's Reader's Choice Awards. Bradley scored well with readers in the categories of on-site parking, availability of charging stations and free Wi-Fi, decent restaurant options, and overall relaxed atmosphere. Topic: <laughs> Accidents and Incidents. On March 4, 1953 a slick Airways Curtis Wright C-46 Commando N-4717N on a cargo flight from New York Idlewild Field crashed. Bradley was experiencing light rain and a low ceiling at the time of the incident. After being cleared to land on runway 06, the pilot reported problems intercepting the localizer, and continued to circle down to get under the weather. The plane struck trees approximately 1.6 miles .6 kilometers southwest of the airport, killing the crew of two. On July 16, 1971 a Douglas C-47BN-74844 of New England Propeller Service crashed on approach. The aircraft was on a ferry flight to Beverly Municipal Airport, Massachusetts when an engine lost power shortly after takeoff due to water in the fuel. At the time of the accident, the aircraft was attempting to return to Bradley Airport. On May 3, 1991 Orion International wet leased by Emory Worldwide Boeing 727-100 QC, N425EX, caught fire during takeoff. The takeoff was aborted and the three crew members escaped, while the aircraft was destroyed by the fire. The fire was determined to have started in the number 3 engine. It was determined that the ninth stage HP compressor had ruptured. On November 12, 1995 American Airlines Flight 1572 crashed while trying to land at Bradley. The plane, a McDonnell Douglas MD-83, was substantially damaged when it impacted trees while on approach to runway 15 at Bradley International Airport. The airplane also impacted an instrument landing system antenna as it landed short of the runway on grassy, even terrain. The cause of the accident was determined to be the pilot's failure to reset the altimeter, however, severe weather may have played a factor. One of the 78 passengers and five crew on board was injured. On January 21, 1998 a Continental Express ATR-42, N15827, had an emergency during roll on landing. During the landing roll, a fire erupted in the right engine. The airplane was stopped on the runway, the engines were shut down and the occupants evacuated. The fire handles for both engines were pulled and both fire bottles on the right engine discharged. However, the fire in the right engine continued to burn. The airport fire services attended shortly afterward and extinguished the fire. See also Connecticut World War II Army Airfields Hartford Brainerd Airport HFD Flight Simcon Tweed New Haven Airport Haven Westover Metropolitan Airport CEF previously marketed by defunct Skybus Airlines as Hartford Chicopee MA Yankee Terminal Radar Approach Control Y90